Hello, Alice. Hello, Jim. You're off early, aren't you? Yep, on purpose. I put my truck away and came around here right away so I could walk home with you. Okay? Well. Listen, Alice. You know I'm crazy about you, don't you? Well, you do act sort of interested. You know I'd do anything in the world for you. Yes, I've been counting on that, too. But holy smokes, you can't expect a fellow to keep on talking about marriage for a whole year and get nothing but conversation. You ask me, you don't want to marry me. Oh, you know I do, Jim. It would be wonderful. Sure it would, but you've got to come down to cases. Now, look, can't you just see me and you in a nice little flat, all fixed up pretty with a couple of kids under our feet? Kids? Yeah, that would be grand. Would two be enough? Well, you've got to creep before you can run. The first one would be a boy, and we'd name him after you. <laughs> and then a little girl. To keep him company. Oh, Jim, if we only could. Well, there's nothing to stop us. Oh, yes, there is. You know I've got to stick to the folks. We've just got to wait. Wait, that's all I've been hearing for the past year. It ain't natural for a guy to live alone. I'm getting sick of it. Hello there, son. How are you? <laughs> oh, well, now, just a minute, if that's the way you feel. He's afraid of folks. Yelling all the time. I see. What's your name? I'm Bill. What's the matter with that leg of yours, Bill? I don't know. It's always been like that. No good for nothing. Have to come and get you one of these days and take you up to the hospital. No. I... I don't want to go there. They'd hurt me. No, we wouldn't hurt you. We'd fix you up so you could go out and play baseball with the rest of the boys. Honest? Gee, I'd take a chance for that. That's the date, mister. You won't forget. <laughs> no, Bill, I won't forget. What are these, soldiers? <laughs> How old is your brother here? He's about 12 years, but he ain't got the sense of a two-year-old. Hmm. It's too bad. You working, Mr. Mason? No. How's a fellow gonna get a job these days? There ain't none, I tell you. That's right. I guess things are pretty tough. Don't you get any help from the city? The city don't care nothing for poor folks. The only help we get is from my daughter, Alice. Oh, well, don't you worry. I'm sure I'll be able to get some help for you. Yeah, I've heard that before, too. Say, uh, where's the kid that was born? Oh. Why, the baby died, didn't I tell you? No, no one ever tells me nothing around here. We did our best. Well, that's all right. One less mouth to feed. Well, <clears throat> don't let your wife get up, Mr. Mason. She'll need a little attention for the next few days. She can take it. She's been through it often enough. Oh, Jim, please don't be mad. Just be patient a little while longer, will you? Won't you? You'll never be sorry. Honest, you won't. Okay, kid. I'll wait. Hey, wait a minute. We can't do that here. Hey, look, there's an ambulance at your house. Well, they must have brought my home. I'd better hurry. All right, see you in the morning. Good night. You're sweet. Oh, hello there, how are you? Oh, hello, Dr. Brooks. Is Ma all right? Of course she is. I just brought her home. And I had a look at Bill, too. I'll try and get him in the hospital next week. Maybe we can do something with those legs. Oh, that'll be fine, Doctor. I'd better run in... And there's something else, too. The city ought to be helping you. I'm going to report your case to the welfare board. You know, you're carrying too much of a burden on your own shoulders. Oh, I don't mind. Of course, I can give the folks everything they need, but... We get along. I know, but it'll make things easier for you. All right, Doctor. I'd better run in and see my mother now. And thanks for everything. Well, that's all right. Look, Pa, Ma's home, isn't she? Yeah. Oh, is she all right? Yeah, of course she is. I want right. to see her. Hello, dear. So glad to have you back again. The baby died. I know. Poor lucky little devil. But it's just you I'm thinking about now. You've got to hurry up and get well, and the only way you can do it is not to worry. <laughs> I mean it. You just leave everything to me and we'll have you in your feet in no time. Now go to sleep and forget about things, huh? 
Oh, Bill, can't you find anything else for him to play with? Whiskey bottles. That's all he wants. He cries if you take him away from him. Yeah. Takes care for his old man. Where's the skate and pencil I brought him? I want him to learn something. He can't get anything out of these things. No, Pa get everything out of them. Oh, Pa, don't you ever think of cleaning up after you eat? That ain't a man's work. Well, run down to the corner and get me some bread and a bottle of milk. I've got to get supper ready. All right. You got any money? Just about enough. Pa, I had 15 cents in this pocketbook. What do you mean? Is that the way to talk to your father? Are you accusing me? You go out and get that bread and milk. Oh, all right. Dr. McIntosh in his office. Yes, he is, Doctor. Come in. Hello, Dr. McIntosh. Hello, Brooks. Hi, Crosby. Hello. Did you get your pet patient home? I'll say I did him with a home. What do you mean? Brooks was all worked up about a charity case in the maternity ward. He insisted on seeing her home. Who was it, Brooks? Well, that Mason case. The baby was born dead. Good thing, too. She already has a house full of idiots and cripples. It wasn't a very pleasant experience. You wanted me to go with you. Don't you think they see enough misery right here in the hospital? Well, this was a special case, sir. You see, I'm afraid they're pretty hard up. The oldest boy's in jail, and the only means of income they have is from a daughter that works in the laundry. And that can't be very much. Why don't you give them half of your salary? Mm, I wish I could. I'll do everything I can for them. In fact, I'll take up a collection for them right here in the hospital. How much can I put you down for, Crosby? Not a dime. I contribute enough of my time to these charity cases. Without sharing a few pennies I make. This family's all you say it is. There's a law in this state that should be invoked. Your law, I suppose? Absolutely. Sterilize them, my boy. Sterilize them. But, Mrs. Mason, the Welfare Association is only trying to protect you. Well, we didn't want to talk about this until you were well again. But you really don't want any more children. Not if I can help it. We can't take care of the ones we got. Well, there you are. That's just what I'm telling you. Now, what we propose to do will prevent others from being born. I don't want to go back to that hospital. But the operation is very simple. Yeah, I'll bet it is. Well, there's nothing to it, really. Now, the state is only trying to befriend you. When Dr. Brooks reported your case, we gave you financial help at once. But now we find you need more than that. And you want Alice to go, too? Why, of course. She has your blood in her veins. Maybe she won't want to go. <laughs> you leave that to me. I'll make her understand it's for her own good. Who's going to take care of the kids then? Yeah. I can't do it alone. Oh, no, that's all been attended to. We'll send the cripple boy to an orthopedic hospital. What, Bill? Yes. And the others will be placed in institutions where they'll receive a proper medical attention. But I don't want it. And that leaves me here to look out for myself. Eh? <laughs> no, my dear man. You're going to the hospital too. What do you mean? And let them operate on me? Nothing doing. What kind of a sap do you take think I am? Easy. Take it easy. <laughs> it is nothing to be alarmed about. Maybe not, but I got my rights and I won't give them up. Well, of course, the authorities would rather do it with your consent. But if you persist in refusing, you must understand that all financial help will be withdrawn at once. Oh, yeah? Well, that's different. Suppose I talk it over with the old lady. Oh, it's a very good idea. We'll wait for you. Well, come on. But remember, that may be all right for the others. But as far as I'm concerned, I ain't promising nothing. Come on. I won't do it, I tell you. I won't do it. Don't be a fool. You heard what you said about the law. Besides, they won't help us anymore. All I'm worried about is Alice. She's no better than we are. There ain't nothing wrong with her. She ain't got none of our blood. Maybe I better tell them the truth. Are you starting that again? Haven't I told you you ain't supposed to say nothing to nobody about that? They ain't my none of our kids. Shut up, will ya? We brought her up, didn't we? If she was to find out the truth, she'd up and marry this Jim Baker. Then where'd we be without her dough to help us out? That kind of an operation. Well, that won't hurt her none. Maybe not. Anyway, she won't have to go through what I did. It ain't worth it. Oh, come on, let's tell him he's fine. Well, it's all right. A very wise decision. I'll show you where to sign your name.
nice of you to wait and give me a ride home. Well, I had nothing else to do. I'm going away tomorrow. Where are you going? The laundry bought some new trucks. I'm going to supervise bringing them in from the factory. I'll be back in two or three days. Oh, I'll miss you, Jim. Yeah. I got some news for you, too. We need another car washer, and the boss said he'd give your old man the job. Honest? Oh, that's swell. If it can only keep him sober. Yeah. You leave that to me. He's going to start working next week, and I'm going to make him like it. I'll take care of your family, all right. Now tell me you won't marry me. But, Jim, do you think that... Say, have I got to stock you to make you say yes? Well, if you're going to act that way, I guess it's all set. Well, I guess it had better be. When do we do it? Saturday? Well, that's too soon. A week from Saturday, then. Why are you so set on Saturday? Well, it's a weekend, ain't it? And I don't have to go to work till Monday. Soon now, we can be together all the time. Gee, life ain't so bad after all. Oh, it's grand. Jim, listen. Yeah? Do you remember that little apartment you looked at last week? The one with the breakfast nook? Uh-huh. That's the one we're going to get. Can we afford it? Sure we can, nook and all. The boss is going to give me a raise the minute I get married. And we'll have that radio I showed you. Oh, a breakfast nook and the radio. we got to have a bedroom suit, too, and... And an easy chair in the parlor. And some lovely chintz curtains on the windows. Mm, and Brussels carpet on the floor. And blue and... dishes with flowers on them and shiny pots and pans. Yeah, from the ten cent store. Oh, Jim, won't we be happy with a home of our own? And kids and everything? Mm, I'll say. Are you happy? Gee, yeah. Uh, are you? Plenty. Look out, there's someone there seeing the folks. Goodbye, dear. You'll be back in a couple of days now, won't you? Sure, two or three at the most. Bye. Where's everybody? Where's Ma? She didn't take sick again. Are you Alice Mason? Why, yes. But where are Ma and the kids? Well, they're all safe. Now, there's nothing for you to worry about. Now, sit down. I want to talk to you. I'm Mrs. White of the Welfare Association. You're 17, aren't you, Alice? Yes, but what have you done with my folks? Well, we're trying to help them, Alice, and you too. They were taken to the hospital this afternoon. Hospital? Wasn't well, one of them sick this morning? Ma isn't worse, is she? Where's Pa? He's gone to the hospital too, Alice. I don't see what for. You're sure you didn't put him in jail? Of course not. I said we were trying to help them. You better tell her so she'll understand. Well, we thought it necessary to present your family's case to the State Medical Commission. And after an examination, they decided there was but one important action to take. To have your entire family sterilized. Why, what's that? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, we investigated your family's history, Alice. And those of the past three generations have been feeble-minded. Congenital cripples or habitual drunkards. Instead of improving each generation is more of a problem. Now, in this state, we have a law which provides for such people to have an operation so there won't be any more children. I see. Now, we placed your brothers in institutions where they'll be properly cared for. But you can go back to your job soon. I'll arrange to have it held open for you. But I'm keeping my job. I'm not going anywhere. Now, you're going to the hospital too, Alice. But there's nothing wrong with me. Perhaps not. You wouldn't want to marry some fine young man and be ashamed of the children you had. And you mean they're going to stop me from having children ever? Exactly. I'm all right, I tell you. I won't go to any hospital. Now, Alice, you must be reasonable. Now, we got a court order that besides your parents gave permission, you'll get a chance to tell your side of it in court. I won't go, I tell you. We don't want any trouble with you, young woman. If you refuse to go, the officer here will take you by force. All right. Maybe I'd better go. There might be a chance for me in court. Sure. Oh, of course. You don't mind if I go to my room and get some things? I'll need them. Go right ahead. I thought we were going to have some trouble with her. Well, I know how to handle them. I do it to be a shop, but we want this girl more than all the others. 
She's the one who's likely to spread the tape. Well, if you take my advice, you'll go in there and see what she's doing. I shall. you close that door. What's the matter with you? Ain't you got any manners? Yeah. Another kid, huh? Yeah. And footloose just like all the rest of them, too. Gee, it's getting so that a real bull like us guys ain't got a chance with all these kids taken to the road. Oh, quit your beeper and go back to sleep. Hey, we ain't pulled out of this last point yet, have we? No, they're waiting for another train to pass or something. Well, I feel like a smoke. You want one? Yeah, I want to get some sleep. What about you, kid? Have a cigarette? Hey, what's the matter with you? Ain't you a dummy or something? Oh, leave the kid alone. No, you ain't bothering the kid. Just trying to be sociable. How long have you been on the road, kid? What's the matter? You scared, Sonny? Say, listen. There ain't nobody that's going to hurt you. Holy gee, don't tell me. It's a girl. Mm. No wonder you wouldn't talk. Go away, please. I'm getting right off. What's your hurry? Leave me alone, can't you? I didn't know anyone else was in this car. Say, don't be like that. <laughs> you and me is going to have some fun on this trip. <laughs> please go away. No, wait a minute. Stop. Hey, what's going on over there? Stop. Hey, you shut up. You want the whole train crew in on it? Hey, they're going along this set. You tell your own business. I should leave it alone. All right, try this on your chin. How far are you going, kid? As far as I can get. Oh, you're a girl. Sure. Come on, jump right in. I don't blame you for running away. What's the big idea trying to do anything like that to a nice young girl like you? You did just right. I'm all for you, kid. Thanks, Victor. Well, who are you stopping here for? What is this place? The sheriff's office. I've been looking for you. Come on, sister. Now, who drank that orange juice? Orange juice? Why, yes, there was an ounce of castor oil in it. <laughs> Calling Dr. Darcy. Calling Dr. Darcy. Dr. Darcy wanted in the psychopathic ward. 
Hey, Dorothy. Yeah? They're calling you. Yeah? Well, this time you'll have to wait. Calling Dr. Brooks. Calling Dr. Brooks. Calling Dr. Brooks. Calling Dr. Brooks. Did Dr. Brooks say he was coming? Yes, he's on his way now. the doctor that knows the Mason family? Why, yes. Well, what's the matter? Is anything wrong? It's Alice. I'm Jim Baker, the fellow she's going to marry. Oh, hello, Jim. Well, what's happened? They've got her in jail. They're going to have a trial this afternoon. That's why I come after you. You've been so nice to the family. Maybe you can do something to help. Well, of course I'll try. Why did they put her in jail? Those welfare workers you sent down there. Yes? They said the whole family had to be operated on. Alice ran away, but they caught her and brought her back. You mean they want to sterilize her? Well, I guess that's what they call it. You've got to do something to help her, Doc. We can't let them do that. Why, of course not. What time does the case come up? Pretty soon now. I, I just found it out a little while ago. Well, you wait right here. I'll change my clothes. It won't be a minute. All right, Doc. Gee, thanks. Who filed the prisoner's appeal? His father. Is he in court? He hasn't come forward, Your Honor. He was notified, wasn't he? Yes, Your Honor. Well, then why isn't he here? I really don't know. I sent out I think the... I can ask that question, Judge. He's in jail. In jail? And had the nerve to file an appeal against the order of this court? Petition not allowed. Stuart, you are to be transferred to one of the state hospitals for immediate sterilization. Next case. He certainly gets rid of them fast. You haven't seen anything yet. Spike Howard. You filed this appeal on your own behalf, didn't you? Sure. Petition not allowed. You're to be paroled within a year if you submit to the operation. Your parents have added their consent to the orders of this court and the recommendations of the State Medical Commission. I can find no basis for an appeal from the original findings in the case. We well, should be grateful. This means that you'll be released soon instead of spending another five years in the penitentiary. You understand, nurse, I, I want the boy to look just as nice as possible. His case will be up before the judge in just a few minutes. Now, keep him perfectly quiet. All right, Senator. Ow! What are you doing? Ow! What is that to do? Be quiet, you fool. Put a bullet on quickly. Whitney, Come along, Whitney. Here. They're calling your case. Come along, be quiet. Good afternoon, Judge. Oh, good afternoon, Senator. I didn't know you were actively practicing again. I'm really not, Judge. I only took this case as a special favor to my old friend, Jonathan Whitney. Oh, yes, the public utilities man. Is this his son? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And we wish to appeal the decision of the lower court and the state medical commission. The sentence in this case seems unnecessarily uh, drastic. Uh, Dr. James and uh, Dr. Barbour here, as you know, are the two leading alienists in our state. They will testify that my client's condition is a temporary one, easy to rectify. Therefore, Your Honor, we ask that you will reverse the sterilization sentence in this case. Well, I know the doctor's reputations and feel certain I can depend upon the facts you have placed before me. Petition allowed. Thank you, Judge. Not at all, Senator. It's been a pleasure to have you in this court. Good day. Goodbye, Mr. Whitney. Next case. How's that for a lad? It's about the rawest thing I've ever seen. Alice Mason. Come on, Jim. Are you interested in this case? Yes, Your Honor. I'm Dr. Brooks of the county hospital. This is Jim Baker, Miss Mason's fiance. What testimony have you to offer? In the case of Miss Mason, I can see no reason for the operation that's been recommended. The girl is perfectly normal. She's hardworking and has a good reputation. Do you know anything about her family background? Well, yes, Your Honor, I do. There are several other children, aren't there? Yes. What is their condition? One is a cripple, two others might be classed as feeble-minded. Isn't the oldest son in jail? Oh, yes, I believe so. 
And knowing all that, you still contend that this girl should be allowed to bring more people like that into the world? She's sound, Your Honor. She's not anything like the rest. Surely she should be given a chance to work out her own salvation. I can't agree with you, Doctor. Suppose she is normal. The chances are that her children will inherit the family taint. Isn't that possible? But, Your Honor, I... I'm sorry, Doctor. Three generations of unfit are enough. Petition not allowed. You mean you're going to operate on her anyhow? I see no reason to set aside the verdict. Oh, gee, Judge, don't do that. You see, we... We love each other. We're going to get married soon. All the more reason why I should deny the petition. There's nothing to prevent you from marrying later. Sure, I'll marry her any time. But we want children like other folks. Oh, please, Judge, give us a break. You wouldn't send the man to hang unless he was proven guilty, would you? You've no way of proving our kids wouldn't be all right. You've heard the decision of the court. Next case. Oh, please, Your Honor, don't let him do this. No matter what happens, I can always take care of her. She's not like the rest of the family. She's a good girl, Judge. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Oh, man. no, wait, please. Please listen to me. Don't you understand what you're doing? Look at me. Can't you see that I'm well and strong? And I'll be a good mother, too, Judge. Honest, I will. Please. Can't you do something? You must abide by the decision of the court. I can waste no more time on your case. There are others waiting to be heard. Ain't there nothing I can say? I'm afraid not, young man. I'll do anything. Anything you say. I know what this means, so it's like tearing the heart out of her. Or oh, give her a chance. The case is closed. Court adjourned for 30 minutes. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm going to be all right. Don't let it get you. Okay, kid, it's just that I'm thinking about you. But I tell you, I'm going to be all right. Look, I'm smiling. Come on. Goodbye, honey. Come on, Jim. You remember that Mason family I told you about? Oh, yes. Are they in trouble? Plenty. It's the daughter. The only decent one in the whole family, and they've ordered her to be sterilized. Poor thing. Is it necessary? Well, not in her case, I'm sure. Well, I wish I could find a way to help her. But what could you do? Nothing, I'm afraid. That's just it. To stand by helpless and see an injustice done. I wouldn't give her a chance in court, and it's all my fault. But how could it be your fault, dear? Well, I'm the one who sent the welfare society there. Poor girl planning to be married. Fine young man. And this has to happen to them. I think what it would have meant if anyone had stepped in and kept this happiness from us. Mm -hmm. That's what makes me feel so badly. I'm the cause of that girl being in a spot right now. But you only tried to help her. Yeah. I helped her into a fine mess. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But it's up to me now to help her out of it. <laughs> oh, Dr. Brooks. Yes. Oh, thanks, thanks. That's what makes a doctor out of me, Dorothy. Yeah, that's what makes a dump out of me. If I ever get one whole day off, I'm going to enter myself in a marathon sleeping contest. <laughs> well, here's a chance to catch yourself a nice little nap. Oh, I'll catch it all right, but can I keep it? I won't disturb you. Just going to change my clothes. Oh, boy. Calling doctor. Calling Dr. Cat. Calling Dr. Cat. Calling Dr. Dorsey. Calling Dr. Dorsey. You make me sick. Late this morning, aren't you, Brooks? Oh, yes, I'm afraid I am. I haven't had a chance to look at the schedule yet. What's up? Something that only interest you. Oh, yes, what is it? Right up your alley. I heard you were in court yesterday. We were going to work on some of the patients you saw there. What, so soon? Oh, the quicker the better, I'd say. Get that look off your pan. Anyone to think we're going to sterilize you? Oh. There's really nothing to be afraid of. Of course not. You just wait here. I have the girl, Alice Mason, in charge. She should be operated on by court order. Oh, yes. Miss Beth, you take her to the surgical floor, room 436. All right. This way, please. You go with this nurse.
I've never seen a girl carry on as this one did. Well, I'd like to hear the fuss you'd make if they were going to do it to you. Come on. Have those special patients arrived yet? The two men are here, Doctor. The girl's on her way. No trouble with them. Oh, no, they're all right. If it doesn't get tough, we'll give them a shot of ether. Now, let me have the papers, please. Yes, Doctor. Thanks. Let's go, Phyllis. This is Miss Mason. She's up for surgery this morning. Yes, Dr. McIntosh was asking about her. Take her to her room. All right. This way, please. Take this man first. Recognize these fellows? Yes, I saw them in court yesterday. Think the judge should have turned them loose? No, of course not. But why sterilize them? If they're dangerous, they should be locked up for the rest of their lives. You're hopeless. All right, nurse. And you really think this operation will help a case like that? In most cases, the mental condition is frequently improved. It's worth the experiment. Yes, that's just what it is, an experiment. You have to unlock those cups. Yes, doctor. Keep an eye on him. We don't want any violence. Come along, old boy. We're going to give you a nice little ride. That man doesn't know what this is all about. All the better for him, maybe. Uh, Dr. Brooks, Crosby and I will handle this operation. You would better examine the other patient. We don't want any complications. All right, Doctor. Well, Spike, I've got to look you over. How do you feel? Oh, I feel all right, Doc, but I'm a little nervous. Mm. Hey, Doc, does this operation hurt much? Well, do you ever have a tooth pull? Sure. Well, it won't hurt you as much as that, and it's over just as quickly, too. Now, look here, Doc, on the level. I want to ask you something. All right, go ahead. Well, it's about this operation, see? Come here, close. <laughs> Why, no, of course not, Spike. Well, then what the devil do they do? Well, Spike, I'll show you. The Harry... May I have that chart, please? There's nothing for you to worry about. You see, Spike. Right. Now, look. This operation is what we call a vasectomy. And in performing it, a local anesthetic is all that is necessary. You understand very little pain or mental shock accompanies the operation. That's good news. And the underlying principle is to interfere with the transmission of the spermatozoan and other secretions from being ejected to the outside. This is done by the excision of part of each seminal duct, which is then tied off. I see. Simple, isn't it? Nothing to it. In the case of a female, of course, the general anesthetic is necessary. This operation consists of the removal of part of the fallopian tubes. They're reached directly through the abdomen by an incision. The operation isn't dangerous. I'd say that it was comparable to the removal of an appendix. So that's what they're going to do to me. Or the other one, I mean. That's all. Say, Doc, just confidentially, do you think it'll do any good? <laughs> well, in your case, Spike, I can't see where it'll do you any harm. So there's nothing for you to worry about. Yeah, but look here, Doc. Supposing I should take a fancy to a dame. You know, that might happen even with a guy like me. Oh, yes, naturally. Well, uh, will this operation make any uh, difference to me? <laughs> Not the slightest. The only thing is, Spike, you'll never become a father. Okay, Doc. That's one thing I won't have to worry about. <laughs> in fact, it's said that if this operation is performed on an elderly man, it will rejuvenate his glands so that he may be able to enjoy life to a ripe old age. Yeah? Boy. I'll take it, Doctor. Ward 17, Miss Gray speaking. Who? Howard? Just a moment, I'll ask the doctor in charge. Dr. Brooks, this man's parents are downstairs and want to know if they can see him before he goes into the operating room. Well, of course they can. Why not? Hey, they, they got no business coming here. I'll call you when they can come up. Hey, I don't want them to see me like this. Oh, forget it, old man. Take it easy now. Here they come. They'll be ready for you in a minute. Finish for soon? Sure, ready for Spike now. His mother and father are waiting to see him. 
I've just given him a little lecture so he'll know what to expect. You're a great help around here, aren't you? Guard, you better handcuff him again while he's still unconscious. Is that necessary? Maybe not necessary, but convenient if he should suddenly go violent on our hands. Hey, <laughs> that guy looks nuttier now than he did when they took him out of here. Not losing your nerve, are you, Spike? Me? Not a chance. Okay, it's your turn now. You mean I gotta ride on that baby carriage? Why not? You better ride in style while you can. They don't give you service like this at the big house. Wait a minute. Now, don't hope you can see your boy again when they bring him back. Thanks, nurse. Dr. McIntosh says for you to make a thorough examination of the girl. We won't need you in the operating room for this lad. Here's someone to see you, Spike. Huh? Oh, hello, Mom. Hiya, Pop. Okay, son. Gee, that's good. You don't mind us being here, do you, son? Oh, of course not, Mom. Well, this promises to be a swell party. The more, the merrier. They're waiting for us in the operating room. He'll be back in a few minutes. He's going to be all right? Of course he's going to be all right. Oh, uh, sure, Mom. The doc here just wants to cut a little of the badness out of me. <laughs> I don't think they know where it is, but they think so, and, well, there's nothing I can do about it. My friend, the judge, sort of that. Come on, doc. Let's go. Well done. I hope everything comes out all right. Say, Doc. How much longer is this going to last? They're almost through now, Spike. How do you feel? How would you feel? There's nothing to worry about. Ever have them do this to you? Not yet. Better try it sometime, Doc. Then come around and we'll talk about our operations. Just another minute. Quiet, please. <sighs> They'll be cutting my tongue out next to keep me from talking. Hold everything, Spike. Say, where do these punks get off? How's this operation gonna keep me from stealing? Or packing a rod to use if I get caught in a jam, huh? Well, it won't. Just wait till I get out of stir someday. I'll show them. They haven't made me lose something I'm really gonna miss. All finished. Okay, Doc. You may be finished. But you gotta do more cutting than that to stop me. Oh, well, Dr. Brooks, must I go through with this? Can't you get him to wait till tomorrow? I'm afraid not. But they'd do it for you if you asked them. But the staff have their orders. If you could only get him to wait just one day. Jim says he knows somebody who might be able to help us. No one here has the authority to postpone it. But who gave them the authority to tell me that I can't bring life into the world? Only God has that right. Oh, Dr. Brooks, you told me that you had a little girl in your home. You must know how I feel. Yes, I do. Then won't you please try to do something? I just know you can, a man like you. You're the only one who could help me now. You've got to, you've got to. Good God, there must be a way. Please, God, show him, won't you? Show him how. Please, please. <laughs> What's on your mind? Well, it's about that girl upstairs. We can't let this thing happen to her. Mason girl? I'm afraid it's too late to do anything about that now. We operate on her next. Not if I can stop it. 
Listen, Brooks, I like you. You're the one of the most promising young doctors we've ever had on the staff. I don't want you to let me down. The law must be obeyed. There's nothing we can do about that now. Oh, but there must be. Dr. McIntosh, can't you refuse to perform this operation? Refuse? I? You must be joking. Oh, no, I was never more serious in my life. I can't do a thing like that. Oh, but your word would carry a lot of weight, sir. Why are you so certain this girl shouldn't be sterilized? I tell you, doctor, that she is normal, perfectly so. It would be criminal to perform this operation. You're exaggerating. Oh, let's take my life on it. Why do you realize, doctor, that she's been working since she was a mere child, carrying the burdens of her entire family? Why, there must be good stuff in her. And you couldn't find a finer specimen than the boy she wants to marry. You're mixing sentiment with your science, Brooks. And uh, why not? Is science always right? Well, you're proceeding on a trial and error basis. Is that fair? Well, look at all the great men in the world that may be classified as having been insane or in some other way unfit. Well, look at... Look at Nietzsche, Dostoevsky, Edgar Allan Poe. Suppose their parents had been sterilized. I admit these men are not what we call normal. But did any of them have insane parents? Were any of them fathers to a genius? Listen, Brooks. In most cases, these operations are justified. The benefits are so great that we can take a chance for an occasional mistake. I don't think we've made one yet. Oh, no, you may not have made one, but what about the medical, medical commission and the courts? Why, why, they don't investigate thoroughly. They treat people like so many cattle. And as usual, it's the poor who suffer. Why, take that girl, she... Her papers were in order. She had a court hearing like everyone else. And I'm convinced that in her case, the order was justified. Dr. McIntosh, you've been my ideal ever since I came to this hospital. I thought that you considered human values as well as scientific ones. I do consider them. Not for the sake of the individual, but for the good of the public at large. You've seen this girl's family. That's the most eloquent argument I can think of. Oh, but why wreck her life because of them? We're getting nowhere, Brooks. I see no reason in continuing this discussion. Then you won't help, help me get a delay so at least this girl's case can be reviewed? No, Brooks, I will not. It's about time we were getting back to the floor now. Oh, I won't have anything to do with that operation. Don't be a fool, Brooks. I don't want the memory of that girl haunting me for the rest of my life. I don't want to know she may be in a gutter somewhere and I have to put her there. I can't waste any more time. Return to your work immediately, or else leave your resignation here on my desk. Shall I have the nurse call Brooks, Doctor? No, you'll assist me in this. I've just had a serious talk with Brooks. We'll let him work this thing out by himself. He's too worried about this case, but I can see his side of it. Alice, I've done everything I can. I refuse to have anything to do with it myself. It may mean that I must resign. But I can't stop it. And well, believe me, I'm sorry. I know. You've been awfully good to me. I'll never forget that. Well, we're going to get you ready now. Bet you didn't know I was a barber. <laughs> well, how are you feeling? She's a little nervous, I guess. Oh, that's natural enough. I'd be a little nervous myself. Father's only trying to help you, to help Alice. Mrs. Mason, you must understand what I'm trying to tell you. Don't you see? You're the only one who can save her from that operation now. All we need is your signature on this paper. Won't you, won't you please? No. Or if Dr. Brooks was only here. Dr. Brooks is my friend. Look here, Martha Mason. You were at one time a good member of my congregation. You've heard me preach against this very thing. Dr. Crosby, will you take the patient's pulse and respiration? All right, Doctor. Cheer up, Brooks. Well, Dr. McIntosh, I... My boy, I think that under the circumstances, you should be excused from any participation in this operation. Oh, but Doctor, I... You're a conscientious objector. I've decided you shouldn't be present. You just leave this matter to us. Any acute nervousness, Doctor? I don't think so, sir. Calling Dr. Brooks. Calling Dr. Brooks. Calling Dr. Brooks. Dr. Brooks speaking. Who? What? All right.
Yeah, put him on. Hello, Dr. Brooks. This is Jim Baker. I got Father O'Brien and took him over to the Mason's house. He's there now. They've both been drinking and he can't seem to do anything with them. Mrs. Mason keeps asking for you and, and Father O'Brien says I should ask you to come over as quick as you can. All right, Jim, you go back to the house and wait for me there. Get me a jacket, please. Times that all we need is your signature to this paper. That's going to do it. Come on, sign it, sign it. I ain't gonna sign nothing. Jim, Jim, where's the girl's father? He's in that room there, worse off than she is. Mrs. Mason, if you have any feeling at all for Alice, you've got to help her now. There isn't a minute to lose. Uh, Mr. Mason, wake up, will you? Now here we have a distinguished audience waiting for this. Yes, the medical commission's here in full force. You can't let them do it, don't you understand? Alice is underage. Your protest will at least hold things up and do something, but it can be done. Yeah. You'll regret it all your life if you don't. Go away. I ain't gonna sign nothing. daughter we're asking you to save. Your own flesh and blood. My daughter? Yes, your daughter. Your daughter, Alice. Alice ain't none of my daughter. What? What? What's she talking about? Do you know what you're saying? Sure. Well, it... Alice ain't none of my daughter. Then whose daughter is she? It's the drink, Father. Are you telling us the truth, Mrs. Mason? Sure, I'm telling the truth. She ain't my daughter. Her ma brought her here when she was just six months old. We've had her here ever since. And I don't know what become of her real folks. And that's that. And they were going Come to... Come on, there's no time to lose. Meaning of this. Don't you know that there's a trial in progress? Yes, Your Honor, but there's a, there's a desperate situation that needs your immediate attention. What is it, Father? It's that girl, Alice Mason. Mason? Oh, yes, I heard her case yesterday. But she's at the hospital now, about to be operated on. We've got to stop it. On what grounds? The mother's confessed that she's a foster child. No relation whatsoever. Are you sure of this? I heard it myself, Your Honor. You must telephone the hospital. I should have the mother's statement here before I take action. But of course, your word... You is... have it, Judge. You have my word. Get me Dr. McIntosh at the county hospital. Get me the county hospital at once. County hospital? Judge Bacon wants to talk to Dr. McIntosh immediately, please. I'll see if I can locate him. Surgical aid. Is Dr. McIntosh there? Well, he's operating. I can't call him now.
I'm afraid they won't get him for me, sir. This is Judge Beacon speaking. I'm sorry the doctor's operating. I don't care where he is. I must speak to him at once. It's an emergency call. Get him to the telephone immediately. The judge insists that he talk to Dr. McIntosh at once. Who? What? Call the phone and I'll get him. Get Dr. McIntosh on the telephone right away. But he's operating. I know, but this is an emergency call from Judge Beacon. It's about this case. If the doctor hasn't started the operation, he must answer. An emergency telephone call for Dr. McIntosh from Judge Beacon. Are we in time, sir? You were. Thank God. I told you to have faith, my son. So you're going home, eh? Yes, sir. I'm taking no chances. We're getting married today. Congratulations. <laughs> and we have you to thank for it, Doctor. Oh, nonsense. It's all in a day's work. Calling Dr. Brooke. Calling Dr. Brooke. Well, excuse Calling me, I'm Dr. sorry. Dr. Brooke. Well, good luck to you. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. Dr. Brooks, you're wanted in the past lab. Thanks, I'm on my way up there now. <laughs> <laughs>